Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Known for his authentic laid-back acting style and chiselled features, Gary Cooper was one of, if not the, most famous movie stars of the mid-1900s. During his 36-year career, the Hollywood heartthrob managed to make quite an impression, not only on the screen, but behind the scenes as well. How Gary Cooper got into trouble with seducing multiple women. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Gary Cooper, the American Cowboy The scandalous life and secrets of Gary Cooper A lot of ink has been spilled covering the lives of history's most influential figures, but how much of the forest is lost for the trees? Hollywood has never had a shortage of actors who thrived in one genre, whether it was John Wayne in westerns or James Cagney in gangster films, but few had success across the entire spectrum like Gary Cooper, who managed to earn five Academy Award nominations despite an untimely death that cut short his career. Gary Cooper's rugged mug, soft-spoken demeanour and earnest, haunted eyes for decades made him the quintessential lonely American of motion pictures, a more stoic human protagonist versus boisterous, bigger-than-life Hollywood supermen. Privately a debonair ladies' man with a taste for high society, he crafted an image as just the opposite from his prototype cowboy talkie, the Virginian, playing shy, stoic or shucks heroes. He built that image in such classics as Frank Capra's Mr. Deeds Goes to Town and Meet John Doe, and celebrated biopics like Sergeant York and Pride of the Yankees. Though he cooperated with the US government's Hollywood witch hunts early in the Cold War, he nevertheless made a triumphant comeback in the anti-blacklisting parable High Noon, refusing to disassociate himself from the film's blacklisted writer, Carl Foreman. On screen, Cooper was the tall, lean American cowboy, soldier, baseball player, who embodied the ideals of duty, honour and integrity in a beguiling natural acting style. Off screen, he was the tall, lean American whose hedonism conflicted with the types of heroic roles that made him famous. Gary Cooper had been a star for over 15 years, and it would have been hard for most men to look as super-duper. There were, first of all, his natural physical attributes. Throughout the 1930s and 40s, Cooper maintained his weight of 185 pounds on his 6 foot 3 inch frame. With his light brown wavy hair and vibrant blue eyes, his easy drawl and nonchalant adroitness, he was catnip to women and admired by men. He conveyed a straightforwardness and an honest American handsomeness that seemed to both ignore and rise above the contrived glamour and studied posturing that had characterised so many other film heroes of those early years. There was the naturalness to his talent. By 1945 he had already appeared in 64 feature films, starring in all but the first half dozen. He played virtually every type of role available to a leading man. He was a small-town poet, a small-town sheriff, a playboy, heroic soldier, scientist, spy, professor, French foreign legionnaire, swashbuckler, con man, fighter pilot, Indian fighter, adventurer, Bengal lancer and, of course, dozens of cowboys. No matter what costume he put on, he looked like he owned it. The camera loved him and so did the box office. Cooper was more famous for his tempestuous affairs with stars like Lupe Velez, Marlena Dietrich, Grace Kelly and Patricia Neal for than his acting ability. In his typical manner, Cooper was often dismissive of his success and acting as a craft in general, but few represented the idea of understated masculinity and heroism quite like him. Cooper's understated style personified the notion that a hero was made of deeds, not words. Cooper became the beau ideal. Cooper, as a man of complex and sophisticated tastes as well as large appetites, he had tempestuous relationships with Ingrid Bergman, Clara Bow, and Tallulah Bankhead, and his legendary friendship with Ernest Hemingway. He was born Frank James Cooper in Helena, Montana, one of two sons of an English farmer from Bedfordshire, 
who later became an American lawyer and judge, Charles Henry Cooper, and Kent-born Alice Cooper. His mother hoped for their two sons to receive a better education than that available in Montana and arranged for the boys to attend Dunstable Grammar School in Bedfordshire, England, between 1910 and 1913. Upon the outbreak of World War I, Cooper's mother brought her sons home and enrolled them in Bozeman, Montana High School. When Cooper was 13, he injured his hip in a car accident. He returned to his parents' ranch near Helena to recuperate by horseback riding at the recommendation of his doctor. The crash left him with his trademark stiff, slightly off-balance style of walking. Cooper studied at Iowa's Grinnell College until the spring of 1924, but did not graduate. He tried out unsuccessfully for the college's drama club. He returned to Helena, managed the ranch, and contributing cartoons to the local newspaper. During this period, Gary Cooper took inspiration from Western paintings of Charles Marion Russell and Frederick Remington. Even though he was not accepted in the school's drama club, his interest in drawing and watercolour gained him the art editor for the college yearbook. Art ranked as his sole passion, but he displayed little talent as an illustrator. Quitting Grinnell in 1924, Cooper went to Los Angeles. There, he unsuccessfully sought work as a political cartoonist or artist for an advertising agency. He became a door-to-door -door salesman of discount coupons for a photography studio in order to earn a living. In the fall of 1924, when Cooper was 23, his parents moved to Los Angeles to oversee the properties belonging to two relatives. They asked their son to join them, and soon Gary Cooper was working as an extra and stunt rider for the local movie industry. It didn't take long for Cooper to realise that stunt work was challenging and risky. Riders often sustained severe injuries and after the trauma of his car crash as a teenager, Cooper couldn't afford another physical tragedy. He chose to pursue work as an actor instead. It was during 1924 when he joined his parents in California for Thanksgiving that he met Jim Galeen and Jim Colloway, who were casting as extra and stunt riders in a low-budget western film at a small studio on Poverty Row. With further introductions and having met the casting director, Cooper resolved to work as a film extra for a fee of $5 a day. As with most actors, things started out relatively quietly for Gary Cooper, of course, it was the era of silent films, so that perhaps wasn't surprising. He appeared in a selection of movies as an extra, waiting for the opportunity to get his big break. It eventually came about in 1926, though not in the way he'd expected. He landed one of the male leads in the winning of Barbara Worth, when the intended actor never showed up. The roles started racking up from there. His agent, Nan Collins, suggested changing his name from Frank to Gary, after her hometown of Gary, Indiana. He was cast in many more films, primarily playing romantic heroes for movies like Wings and The Wolf Song. Clara Bow was undoubtedly the biggest it girl of the silent film age during the 1920s, so her opinion held a considerable amount of sway. Actor Bow acted alongside Gary Cooper in the 1927 film children of divorce. She was absolutely smitten, both with his acting and his sex appeal. Bo insisted that Cooper should be cast in her 1927 movie Wings, albeit on a very small part, and it's been widely rumoured that the two were very likely lovers off the screen as well as on it. But their star power was hot too. Wings was a hit. Unlike Cooper, Bo sadly never was able to make the transition from silent films to talkies. While a talented performer on the screen, her harsh Brooklyn accent is usually cited as the cause of her acting career's demise. But Cooper went on to have a long and prosperous film career, and Bo probably helped give him that push in the right direction. It's no shock that Gary Cooper was so successful as a romantic hero given he had quite a way with the ladies, the man apparently couldn't help himself when he was around an attractive woman, and he knew exactly what to say to charm them. It helped that he was regularly cast as the protagonist alongside some of Hollywood's most glamorous leading ladies. Nearly everyone that caught his eye said yes to Cooper, although this wasn't always without issue. He was such a ladies' man that he allegedly had no qualms about seeing multiple women at the same time, 
Nearly every time he had a new co-star, he was tempted to get her in his bed. However, that didn't always mean he wanted to break things off with the other women he was seeing. Of course, having relations with so many leading ladies at the same time was bound to come back to bite him, especially when he met Lupe Velez. Cooper and Velez met on the scene of the Wolf Song, and once again on-screen passion turned into something behind the scenes. At the time their romance was blossoming, the actor was finding success in movies that weren't silent, helping him become an even bigger star. The onset of the Great Depression changed the landscape of Hollywood films, and Cooper used that to his advantage to cement himself as a cinematic icon. It had consequences, though. Smitten with Cooper, Dietrich wanted a piece of the actor. However, Velez was not interested in sharing her man, and a bitter rivalry allegedly developed between the two women. While Dietrich remained a professional, her adversary was reportedly not so dignified. In the eyes of the media, she was a loose cannon who couldn't control herself where Gary was involved. There was nothing she wouldn't do to keep hold of her man, even if he ended up getting hurt. At the same time as this drama went on, Cooper was having his own problems in front of the camera. He took issue with the way the director, Josef von Sternberg, was portraying Dietrich as superior to him. Many shots of Cooper were passive compared to the German actress, and the actor was so upset he went over Sternberg's head to the bigwigs at Paramount. Soon enough, the man got his way and stopped the director in his tracks. Another actress who Gary Cooper was rumoured to have had an affair with during this time period was Carol Lombard, who he starred alongside in the 1931 movie I Take This Woman. Apparently during her marriage with fellow Golden Age star Clark Gable, Lombard claimed to have much better intimate experiences with Cooper than with husband Gable. In fact, the Gone with the Wind star ended up buying a Duesenberg car that was a whole foot longer than Cooper's car. On Easter Sunday 1933 he met his future wife, New York socialite Veronica Balf, nicknamed Rocky by her family and friends. The pair married in December 1933. The couple had one daughter, Maria Veronica Cooper. They were both devoted parents even after a legal separation beginning in May 1951. Gary Cooper had well-known affairs with Ingrid Bergman and Patricia Neal in the 1940s. The indiscretions contributed to the separation, but in February 1954 the Coopers formally reconciled and remained together for the rest of Gary Cooper's life. In 1936 he appeared in one of his defining movie roles playing Longfellow Deeds in Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. His performance as an all-American symbol of virtue and courage earned Cooper his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. He also appeared on the annual list of top 10 film personalities for the first time where he would stay for 23 years. However, his stardom faded somewhat in the late 1930s, but he came roaring back in 1941 when he appeared in the title role of World War I hero Sergeant York and the lead in Frank Capra's anti-corruption classic Meet John Doe. Sergeant York was the top money-making film of the year, the following year he took on another career-defining role as Lou Gehrig in The Pride of the Yankees. He learned how to move like a baseball player for his role in the latter film. Cooper was an ageing star when he took on the role of Sheriff Will Kane in 1952's High Noon. He was in poor health during the filming, and many critics believed his pain and discomfort added believability to his on-screen role. He struggled with health problems in the 1950s, one of his celebrated late career appearances was 1956's Friendly Persuasion, co-starring Dorothy McGuire. In April 1960, Cooper underwent surgery for prostate cancer after it had spread to his colon. It spread to his lungs and bones shortly thereafter. Cooper was too ill to attend the Academy Award ceremony in April 1961, so his close friend James Stewart accepted the honorary Oscar on his behalf. Stewart's emotional speech hinted that something was seriously wrong, and the next day newspapers ran the headline, Gary Cooper has cancer. One month later, on May 13, 1961, six days after his 60th birthday, Cooper died. 
One of the greatest movie stars ever, Gary Cooper set the standard for the strong silent type in a career that spanned from Hollywood silence to the golden age. Gary Cooper will forever be remembered as the all-American movie cowboy, the consummate good guy, the noble hero, the deliverer of justice. That was his classic image. Cooper has undoubtedly left his mark on American culture. Besides his Old West good guy persona, he's actually the reason why any male today has the first name Gary. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Gary Cooper? Cooper turned his personal charm, ravishing androgyny, and riding skills into a film career that spanned more than 30 years.